Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Path Behind the Modules. This is lesson nine, writing addition and subtraction expressions. So this is a classwork. So try doing this on your own, pause the video, and when you come back, see if you've done it correct. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to do these now. Um, I'm going to create a bar diagram. Well, I don't know how to call it bar, but we've been calling them tape diagrams all the year. So let's stick with that. Create a tape diagram to show 3 plus 5. So if I did that, then I would have a diagram with equivalent squares. Best you can do with your writing. So there's 3. And I'm going to add 5 to that. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. So there's a tape diagram for 3 plus 5. Now obviously, there's 3 squares in this one, there's 5 squares in this one, totaling 8. Then it says, how would you this look if you were asked to show 5 plus 3? I'm going to save time here. I'm going to cheat. You can't do this on your paper, but I can do it with this program. All that would mean was rearranging the diagram like this. I should have closed this off the last time, but it would look like that. 5 plus 3 is 5 first, 3 second. Are these two expressions equivalent? Yes, they both equal 8. So example two says, how can we show a number increased by two? Okay, so we don't know the number, so we can make a larger square. So that's just some number A. And we're going to increase it by two. It would look like this. So these are each worth one. So that would be A plus two. We could also have written it the other way, 2 plus A, and we'd still get the same answer. Example 3. Write an expression to show the sum of M and K. Write an expression. That does not mean equal, so that just means an expression. What is the sum of M and K? Well, when we have a keyword here, the word sum tells us that it's addition. And the word and tells us where to put that addition sign. So we're just going to write M and the sum of M and. Okay. Which property can be used in examples 1 through 3 to show that both expressions given are equivalent? So what they're saying is I could have also said or K plus M. It is the. Commutative property of addition. Example 4 says, how can we show 10 minus 6? Draw a bar diagram to model this expression. Okay. So I'm going to draw a bar diagram. Very difficult to do with this pen, so bear with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Made it a little too big, so there would be ten. We're taking away six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to take away these, so I shape these in. These are gone. 10 minus 6, I'm left with 4. What expression would represent this model? The expression of 10 minus 6. Next question says, could we also use 6 minus 10? Did we have 6 and take 10 away? Is that the same as having 10 and taking 6 away? And the answer is no. 6 
minus 10 equals negative 4. We can't take away what we don't have, but we're coming up with a negative number. So subtraction is not commutative. Example 5. How can we write an expression to show 3 less than a number? Start by drawing a diagram to model the subtraction. Are we taking away from 3 or the unknown number? So this is something that you really have to be careful of. 3 less than a number. So if the number was 5, what's 3 less than 5? Hopefully you said 2. So how would we model this diagram? If I call this 3, let's shade it because we're going to take it away. And then we have a certain number n. That's this whole thing. The whole thing is n. And we take 3 away, we end up with something that's more than 3, or maybe not, but it's not negative. So we're taking 3 away from the whole thing. So what expression will represent this model? We have an entire model of n, and we're going to take 3 away. Okay? Very important concept here. A lot of students stumble across and struggle with. Whenever you have the word less than or more than, three less than, three more than a number, you read it backwards. So think of a number minus the number first. So we're reading it this way. A number, n, minus three. So we start at the end and work our way backwards. Less than and more than changes the direction of the read from the English language to the mathematics. Example six. How would you write an expression to show the number c being subtracted from the sum of a and b? Six being subtracted from. Start with writing an expression for the sum of a and b. So the sum of a and b is a plus b. And then c being subtracted from it. So then we have to have minus c after it. Okay? So we also could have had the sum of a and b, we could have had a plus b. We also could have had b plus a. And then we could subtract c from that. Now, a lot of students realize that you need to group things together and would have put parentheses around the a plus b or the b plus a. But it really isn't necessary because PEMDAS says that if we only have addition and subtraction, we work left to right. So parentheses or no parentheses, we're still going to do the first two first. We would have had parentheses here. And PEMDAS would say, do the parentheses first. But if we didn't have parentheses, it'd say, do the addition first. Well, that's the same thing, so the parentheses are not necessary, but they are wrong. Now show C being subtracted from the sum. Well, I've already done that. So actually what I should have here is just this. Okay, put the word or in between. And then a plus b minus c or b plus a minus c. No parentheses necessary, but they would not make it. Example 7. Write an expression to show that the number c minus the sum of a and b. So now we're going to the sum of a and b. Write an expression to show the number c minus the sum of a and b. See the difference now? Here it said subtract c being subtracted from now it's saying subtract. Now it's saying take C and subtract the sum. So now C's got to go first. Okay. Now parentheses matter. Or do they? Well, let's put parentheses just in case. So it's C minus the sum of A and B. So why are the parentheses necessary in this example and not the others? Without parentheses, only a is being taken away from c, where the expression says that a plus b should be taken away from c. So let me give you an example. If I said 5 minus 1 plus 2, where this is c, and this is a, and this is b, if I put parentheses, it'd be 5 minus 3, which is 2. If I don't put parentheses, 
it's 5 minus 1, which is 4, plus 2 is 6. So when it says the sum of A and B, then now we do, do have to subtract and use parentheses. Okay. Replace the variables with numbers to see if C minus A plus B is the same as C minus A plus B. Well, I've already done that. So let me just move that down here. So I jumped ahead of everything and decided to do it on my own, and then the lesson was actually asking me to do that. So there we have it. Okay. So exercise one, now it's your turn. It says write an expression to show the sum of 7 and 1.5. And I believe there are more on the next page. So do 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Pause the video. See if you can do these. Come back and check your solutions. All right. Hopefully you've had a chance to do this. Let's see if your answers are correct. It says write an expression to show the sum of 7 and 1.5. Keyword here is sum. The word and tells us to, where to put the plus sign. And the answer is 8.5. But it says to write an expression and not solve, so that would be my answer. Number two, write two expressions to show W, is in w increased by 4. W increased by 4 or that. And draw a model to prove that both expressions will represent the same thing. So if this is W plus Four or four plus W, it would be the same thing, just rearrange. Additions can you do. Write an expression to show the sum of A, B, and C. A plus B plus C. All right? I'm going to take this a little further. So I'm going to really solidify the fact that addition's commutative. So I could also say A plus C plus B. So I rearranged to be in the C and left A where it was. Now let's start with B and add A and C. Leave B where it was and switch C and A. Start with C. Put A plus B and then switch the B and the A. So there's six possible solutions there. All are true. Write an expression and a model showing three less than. Keyword there, less than, means to read this way. And less than means minus. So it would be P minus three. Start with the end. Minus three. A model would be, there's P. And then split P up into three pieces and take three pieces away. So I would shade this portion here. That's the equivalent to three. So it would be P minus three, and we'd be left with this smaller piece. Write an expression to show the difference of three and P. This one, it says the difference of three and P. Difference means minus goes to where the word and is, so it's 3 minus 3. It doesn't say less than, we don't read it backwards. Number 6, does that work for 2, 3, 4, 5, number 6, write an expression to show 4 less than the sum of g and pi. 4 less than, there's that keyword there, minus, or less than the sum of g and 5, g plus 5, minus 4. Okay. We also, the sum doesn't matter, order does not matter. I could also have said 5 plus g minus 4. What does matter is the minus comes last. You cannot rearrange the less than. 
And finally, seven, write an expression to show four decreased by, so I'm reading it this way, it didn't say less than, four decreased by the sum of g and y. It is the only way to write that. Actually, no, it's not. Four minus has to stay the same. Five and g can rearrange because addition is commutative. And number eight, should exercise six and seven have two different expressions? Why or why not? Um, yes, they can as long as you're expressing the addition as commutative. But we cannot move the four and subtract the sum of these two minus four. Okay. And let me uh, bring that in. Okay, so it says, should exercises 6 and 7 have different expressions? Why or why not? The expressions are different because one includes the word decrease by, and the other has the words less than. The words less than give the amount that was taken away first, whereas the word decrease by gives us a starting amount, and then the amount was taken away. And I explain that above. Okay, so that is the end of lesson 9. Go do your problem sets.